What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com back with another Blender add-on tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to use the add-on flip fluids in order to simulate fluids inside of your Blender models. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so first off, you can find flip fluids by visiting the CGEssentials.com slash flip fluids. So that's gonna take you to the page where you can purchase this add-on. This is a paid add-on, um, but what it does is it basically, and I will note that is an affiliate link. And one thing I will note about this is basically this is an add-on that's designed to help you render um, liquid simulations. So it's built around a simulation technique that's used by other programs as well. So one cool thing about this is they've got a substantial amount of documentation in here, things like installing the add-on, creating simulations, other things like that. So if you're looking for some documentation and this is probably one of the more well-documented add-ons inside of the Blender market. So one other thing to note, and we can then we can get started, is I will link to the documentation page um, in the notes down below as well. So if you're looking for some help, um, you can go check out that documentation page. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off and we're just going to create a simple simulation. So the first thing we wanna do is inside of your preferences, you wanna make sure that you've installed and enabled flip fluids. So you can see how animation flip fluids is in here. Um, one thing you probably need to do if it's the first time you're using it is you need to install it, you need to save your preferences, and then you need to restart Blender. So when you install and enable it, you just wanna click over here and click on the button for save preferences. So that way um, your options are actually going to show up when you open up Blender. And so you're gonna be able to tell if this was successful or not, because if you go over into the physics tab, um, there's going to be a flip fluid option over here if it's enabled properly. But what we're gonna do is let's go ahead and let's create a simple simulation. So I'm gonna start by deleting out my Bonnie model, and then I'm just gonna do a shift A, and I'm going to add a cube. So I'll move the cube up a little bit so it's aligned at the ground. We'll make it very simple for right now. So we're gonna take this cube and we're going to use this as a simulation location for our fluids. And so the way we wanna do that is we wanna go over into the physics tab over here and click on the option for flip fluid. What that's gonna do is that's gonna make this object a flip fluid object. So notice how that takes this object and it puts it inside of a flip fluids co collection. And so the first thing we wanna do for this one is we want to make this box a domain. And so the reason we wanna make this box a domain is this is basically the area where our simulation is going to happen. So um, this is basically gonna simulate the fluid physics inside of this cube. So we're always gonna need a domain when we're doing a fluid simulation. And so now let's make this very simple. So let's add a sphere. So I'm just gonna do a shift A, go into my mesh, I'm gonna add a UV sphere. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna move that up and I'm gonna scale it down. What I wanna do is I wanna make sure that sphere is 100% inside of this box, right? So we want that inside of this box because this is only simulating the, flu the fluids inside of the domain that we set, which is this box. And so now what we wanna do is we wanna take this sphere, we wanna make it a flip fluid. And under the type for this one, we wanna make this a fluid. So the other one was a domain, this one is a fluid. And so one thing to note about this is we're gonna go through and we're going to bake this simulation, meaning we're gonna pre-calculate the way the physics are going to work. And one thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to save your file because when you save your file, what that's gonna do is that's gonna save your bake simulation into the actual file location itself. So we're just gonna click on this button to save or you can do a normal save. So we're just gonna save this in a folder and I'm just gonna call this fluids example and click on save as. What that's gonna do is that's gonna save that inside of this folder. Notice how that little red thing is no longer showing up over here um, in my settings. And so now what we wanna do is we wanna double check a couple different settings, right, before we do this. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure that our frame rate inside of our settings matches up with the frame rate inside of our output properties. So these are both set to 24 frames per second. If you have this set to scene, then this should work just fine. It shouldn't be an issue. And so the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust my number of frames from 250 down to 
100. And that just means there's gonna be less frames that need to be baked in here. And so now, let's go ahead and let's bake this. So you can find the bake settings by clicking on your cube or your domain. So if you click on your sphere, that's not gonna show up, right? You see how there's no settings in here for bake. Um, that's going to be something that you're gonna select inside of your domain right here. And so what we wanna do is we just wanna click on the button for bake. So when we click on bake, what this is gonna do is this is gonna tell you that this is calculating or baking all of your different scenes. And it's gonna show you an estimated time remaining right here, but basically what this is doing is this is going through and this is simulating the physics for this object um, at any given frame. And so notice how if I was to adjust this right here, up to the point where the frames have been calculated, you can see how this is actually gonna show you a preview of what this fluid is going to look like if you click and drag this. So notice how as I click and drag this, um, if I drag to a point where this hasn't been calculated yet, like 60, notice how this doesn't show up anything in your viewport. But you can see how if this baked up to like 12 frames, then I can see everything up to 12 frames inside of my animation. So what this is doing is this is calculating every one of those frames to see what our fluid is going to look like inside of Blender. And so let's take a look at a couple other settings in here really quick, specifically the resolution. So um, notice how there's a box in here for use recommended. What that's gonna do is that's just gonna set your resolution to the recommended resolution. But basically there's a resolution setting over here for your overall resolution. And then there's a setting over here for your preview resolution. And so what this means is this means that your preview resolution is going to show you, is going to allow you to set the quality of the preview inside of your viewport while your resolution itself is gonna set your final resolution. Notice how the larger your preview resolution is, the larger your cache size is, meaning this is gonna take up more file size inside of your save location on your hard drive. And so you can see what your fluid is doing inside of here. Well, one of the things we're gonna wanna do is we're not just gonna want this to be like a mesh, right? Like right now it's a mesh, almost like this was made of clay, like a liquid made of clay. Well, one of the cool things about flip fluids is it actually comes with materials down below that you can apply to this, um, to this simulation. So, and so if we scroll down, there's an option in here for flip fluid materials. And so Flip Fluid Materials is going to do is that's going to allow you to use the built-in materials inside of Flip Fluids in order to set up a material for your object. So let's say, for example, for our surface, there are options in here for like wine and wax and water, lots of different uh, material looks in here. So for example, if you were to go with the, with the apple juice option right here, you can see how this is actually going to apply an apple juice material to this. And uh, you can see how inside of our... Um, inside of viewport itself, you can actually see what that fluid is going to look like um, in the material preview option. So in addition, we could also come in here and let's do this. Let's add a plane. So we're gonna do a shift A. And we're gonna do all this while this is baking. So we're gonna add a plane. We're gonna scale that plane up like this. And then we'll add a couple lights. So I'm gonna do a shift A and we'll just make this very simple and we'll just add a couple point lights. So I'm gonna move this up. Let's move this over here. We'll duplicate it by doing a shift D, move this over here. We'll duplicate this, move this over here. So now if we were to go into render preview mode like this, you can see what this is going to look like in every scene. And notice how this is rendering out using Eevee. So it's really fast for us to create this. Now there are some settings that we could adjust in order to make this look a little bit different. But for right now, I think this gives us a really good result. So we're also gonna do a shift A and we're gonna add a camera. And I'll just type zero, make sure my camera is locked to my view. And then we'll just set this viewport up just like this. and our baking is now complete. So you can see how this is baked all the way up to frame 101. So now if we were to move this to the left and then click play, you can see how this is actually giving us an animation of this fluid inside of the box. And notice how the box is currently acting as an exterior, um, an exterior um, boundary 
over here. So what it's doing is it's basically keeping the fluid in. And we'll talk a little bit, um, probably in another video about creating different containers and other things like that. I think there's a ton of cool stuff we could do with this add-on. But let's go ahead and set up our other materials real quick. We'll click on our cube and let's just scroll down and let's just set this. This has a foam material. It has a bubble material and it has a spray material built in. Those all get added on as a part of this add-on. So I'm just gonna set those and just leave this as is. We're not gonna do anything with the dust for right now. But now we have this rendered image of this sphere falling down inside of this cube. So what I wanna do is I wanna render out an animation. So to render our animation, we've got our camera set up, we've got our lighting set up. So all we wanna do is just go to render, render animation. And this is gonna go through and this is gonna render out all 100 frames of our fluid. So notice how it's rendering out. And actually, I usually recommend that you save your model before you do this, because um, I have had this crash on me once or twice when it was trying to simulate this. So that would have been a smarter thing to do, but that's okay, we'll go ahead and let it render out and then take a look at our final result. All right, so now let's go open up our file. And one thing I didn't mention is um, I put this in the folder where my flip fluids um, folder goes and I made it an FFmpeg video. Um, that's something we can talk about more in another video, but this one is more about flip fluids than it is actual rendering settings. If you have questions, leave a comment down below. But now, if I open up this video, you can see how it goes a little bit fast but it's gonna look something like this. So you can see how the fluid falls down inside of my cube. And then it just kind of uh, goes to a resting state. And so when I exported this, I accidentally exported the 250 frames, so half of this is blank. But you can see how this simulates the way that that fluid works really well. And so there's a lot of things that I'm excited about with this add-on. So we can talk about like putting things in containers and having water um, interact with moving objects, other things like that. But you can see how this is actually a really quick, easy way to simulate fluids inside a blender. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what kind of tutorials you'd like to see on flip fluids. If you've used it before, I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, so please make sure to check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.